think more Fortune 100 companies are going to look at, you know, tech hubs outside and, you know, recruiting from that tech base is definitely one of them. Uh, you know, I know we're here to talk about um, uh, talk about the industry side side of stuff, but I'll, I'll sh uh, you know, I'll say that uh, your classification of not not California, uh, New York City or Boston, it, you know, definitely resonates with me where I feel like everything else is where you're where you're outside of the madness of the the startup madness or even startup mania really of of uh you know uh, of those cities right where talking to a company from sacramento california has a very different experience and they might have the same feeling towards being in the mighty middle as as a startup in you know in indiana would have mm -hmm. uh, and so to me to me it's just about not investing in san francisco new york or boston maybe not mm -hmm. maybe not seattle la on the bubble yeah, I I feel like it, I feel like it's 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 morphed over time because I think originally when we when we position the Midwest against those it's it's almost like almost out of like pity like it's always like oh oh shucks like these old Midwestern folks also like technology like that that was how it felt maybe five or six years ago even around the time I moved you know back to Indianapolis from the Bay Area but I feel like lately. I, I definitely sense more areas developing their own identity and developing you know, products and companies that are that should stand on their own, you know, as it were. Um, so I think that that's been a, a shift that I see in the mighty middle is really where a lot of these like smaller ecosystems are starting to network, you know, together and, and realize that we can establish our own identity, even figuring out, you know, what it is. I think for Indianapolis, you're figuring out who we are as a city. I think I think we're still figuring it out beyond you know, sports, <laughs> but um, we still have that. Uh, but I think that that's that's going on throughout the, the the middle. But we're starting to see that identities are emerging out of that as well, and not just positioning against the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, Christian, I, I definitely agree. Um, you know, I think some some recent news is Tesla and Oracle, and I think there was another really big Fortune or no, ten company that's moving oh, yeah. out there. Yeah, from San Francisco to I think all of them are going to Austin uh, specifically. But I do think as I would say Austin fills up, I think more Fortune 100 companies are going to look at, you know, tech hubs outside and, you know, recruiting from that tech base is definitely one of them. You know, I've been to Indianapolis for a couple tech events and really love the, uh, the tech ecosystem there. I mean, Denver Boulder is definitely growing. You see small pockets in Colorado Springs and Fort Collins as well. I mean, time is definitely a factor. But I feel like the the culture of uh, of really just building on the foundation that's already there is is starting. Um, so I'm excited to see these different cultures pop up. Um, I know some of the questions were, uh, you know, uh, what what cultures highlight different regions. And Pittsburgh obviously comes up with with robotics, and we've done a good amount there as well. But it's just really exciting to see them come up. It's it's always very uh, exciting to travel to that ecosystem and meet with the entrepreneurs and and kind of get their framework as well. Yeah. You know, Christian, I want to, or Clay, I want to, I want to uh, dig in on that. So, you know, uh, let's let's start with that for for our topics on industries here is Pittsburgh, and and I was born and raised in the Berg, and so I love the revitalization. I was just chatting with uh, Ilana Diamond from Four One Two Ventures the other day, and and so it's just great to see, you know, the the activity that's happening there. We've looked at a bunch of companies from Pittsburgh. We had had a bunch in the Startup of the Year program as well. Um, is you know is you know having a, a city that's identified itself as a as a center for robotics for autonomous driving for for ai is this is this helpful is this hurting um you know are there you know what what's what's your take on that guys for both of you yeah i, I think um um to mark's question who just threw it in the chat as well i feel like it, it's fine i mean cmu has really designated itself as almost like a robotics uh, university and i think that's where a lot of the tech talent comes from and we work with innovation works and we have a couple portfolio companies in, in pittsburgh as well i think it's a good thing i mean i do think that attracts national talent either to the university or to those ecosystems to have you know the talent base to hire from um so i do view it as a good thing i mean obviously as it evolves um you know, they'll expand to a lot more. I mean, it's hard to say that only um, for Pittsburgh only focuses on robotics companies, but um, I do think it's a good thing primarily on the uh, attracting talent portion of it. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know Pittsburgh really well, but I, I know, you know, the, the history, even of thinking like industries like steel or manufacturing. And I think a lot of people just like on a macro level, 
can get nervous that if, if we specialize in this new wave of tech, that what happens when one of these industries goes under and you, you end up with with the exodus that Detroit experienced over the last couple of decades. But I don't think that that's necessarily true anymore with tech because tech is is, is everywhere. There, there's not really a quote unquote tech bubble that's even possible anymore because it's it's, it's across you know all industries. But I think with Pittsburgh, um, even if that's one of the identities they have of, of, of robotics, um, I still feel like as that elevates, you get ancillary benefits that come along with it. You're going to get, you're going to draw more engineers. There will be engineers that will leave some of those companies and go start something different that may have nothing to do with robotics. Even here in Indianapolis, um, the existence of Innovate Map is born out of the, the tech scene. And we serve, we're industry agnostic as a, as a creative agency. And we see more creative agencies, you know, spinning up in Indianapolis because of that. And then um, more and more other industries start to spin out, you know, from that. Um, but I, I think there's nothing wrong with it as long as the investments are right. You know, here in Indy with, you know, Exact Target and a Primo getting acquired, you know, um, in, in a really short period of time, those are two marketing software companies. We get sort of dubbed as the, the, the marketing, you know, sort of MarTech capital. But if you look at the last five years since then, all the all of that money got spread around into a bunch of other startups throughout throughout Indy, with High Alpha springing up out of that and funding all different types of of startups, and then you know a lot of the some the equity that came out of the Aprimo exit um, started a bunch of companies. So I think that you can have an identity driven by some of like the major you know acquisitions or business events that happen. But all of that can start to spread out and start to create, you know, you know, more sort of niche industries around it.